Hello. Hello, everyone. Our topic for today is the vital role of uh, research done by uh, active physicians. I'm Bruce Rosen from Israel Healthcare Highlights, and my special guest today is Professor Rivka Karmi. Professor Karmi's illustrious career has included pathbreaking work on the genetic diseases in the Negev uh, Arab Bedouin population, serving as Dean of Ben Gurion University's Faculty of Health Sciences, and serving as president of Ben Gurion University. Since then, she's also been the chair of many vital national uh, commissions and, and bodies, one of which is that she is the founding president of the Israeli National Academy of Science in Medicine. Rivka, let's start with that. Please tell us a bit about that body. Well, thank you, Bruce, and thank you for having me here. Um, in uh, 2020, actually in late 2019, uh, we have founded this uh, Israeli National Academy for Science and Medicine uh, with the, vi the vision of promoting uh, the, uh, the, the uh, track or the, uh, the, the medical training track of um, a, a physician researcher, or would you say physician scientists. Um, I go back many, many years and I had a lot of experience, first as, as being a, a physician, a, a clinician, a very active clinician researcher for, uh, for many years. Uh, and then when I was a dean and, and definitely the president for the university, I've encountered so many issues and problems with wonderful, excellent physicians, many of them MD, PhDs, that had a very long um, a period of training, almost 10 years, that once they graduated medical school with an MD, PhD, you know, the rest of their career could not really be dedicated to research for many, many aspects that we can, we can, uh, um, we can talk about them later. So I was very much determined to really take care of this issue and, and, and work into establishing in Israel a legitimate, you know, um, a structured uh, career of a physician researcher, which is, you know, which uh, exists in many, many, uh, many countries, many Western countries, mainly in, in Northern uh, America, but also elsewhere, and not in Israel. In Israel, when you want to do research, you do it on, you know, your private time, holidays, weekends, etc. Uh, it is changing in recent years, mm. and, 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 and not to, any, to the least, you know, thanks to this academy that we have established. So why, why was there a problem? Why, why wasn't this put into place years ago as in other countries? So there are two issues, two main issues when it comes to active clinicians. One, one is the dedicated time to research. You know, clinical work is consuming. And especially if you are in tertiary or in hospital in general, uh, you don't have free time. And because of the shortage of physician, which you know always were in Israel, um, hospitals and medical centers could not really afford themselves releasing um, uh, physicians to do uh, lab work, especially lab work, because we are, we're talking about this kind of translational research that needs um, uh, uh, platforms, needs uh, labs, needs uh, um, infrastructure, etc. So first of all, is a dedicated site. Secondly, is, um, is obviously resources. You know, physicians uh, up to recent years had to uh, compete with scientists that devote all of their time to research. I mean, they teach a little, but, but you know, most of the time is doing research. So competing with, you know, PhDs, PIs in the universities is not fair. So, so we embarked on really promoting two kinds of, of uh, development. One, the dedicated time, and second, the, uh, the, the infrastructure needed for a young physician who really wants to do significant research in terms of what he gets uh, to establish his lab, which, which later on, enable him to do um, uh, independent research. I understand that, but what's wrong with the other approach, having a division of labor? You have the MDs who go out and treat patients, they get really good, they understand how to talk to people, they understand how to figure out diagnoses, 
and maybe they're a little bit involved, you know, as the second or third researcher in the in clinical trials, they get some publications. And then you leave the lab stuff, the difficult stuff, to the people for whom that's their full-time job. Why is it so important to have people who are in both those worlds? Okay. So definitely, uh, you know, clinical trials is something extremely important that we want to maintain, you know, um, uh, throughout the years. However, you know, all of the real, um, uh, um, you know, the real developments in medicine really came from Course. you know from next to the bed so we are talking about you know people who are experiencing um or, or are relating to issues that they encounter next to their patient's bed and in that regard they are completely different from the phds who, are, mm. who usually embark on an issue you know a problem that they, they want to really very deeply um uh, research so the idea of of looking for the needs of the patients in terms of understanding the disease, in terms of diagnosis and in terms of treatment, and then bring into the lab, you know, do whatever you need to do in order to, 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 to tackle the issue and then bring the results back to the, to, to the bed. So bed, bench and bed, bed. This is something which is very, very unique to, um, to medicine. And you, you know, the, in, in medicine, in fact, you know, if we talk about the about impact, both uh, health-wise and also e economical impact, you know, there are a long-hanging fruit over there. There are lots of things that we can be developed into, you know, various startups, whether in, in pharmaceuticals or recently, you know, in AIs, precision medicine, etc. And they all go back goes back to the need base. Um, uh, research or translational research. Now, you've been concerned about this issue for a long time in various, in various very influential roles. Can you say what things you were able to do this about this as the Dean of uh, Faculty of Health Sciences, how you were able to deal with it as a president of an entire university, and what different you can do about it in your current role as head of this public body? Well, that's a very good question in terms, you know, I was very partially successful in that uh, because it is always about resources. So, you know, my claim to fame, unfortunately, and I'm putting it in parentheses, is that I, I managed to take two bright MD, PhDs, wonderful physicians, but also extremely uh, great researchers and bring them over to the university. So giving them 100% in the university, let them research, you know. Um, and, and the reason for that was because I didn't have any cooperation, collaboration from the medical kind of area. You know, I, I suggested them, let's go, you know, let's go 20%, 80%, whatever, but they refused. That was at that time. Things are changing. And now hospitals really realize how important it is both to good medicine. I think the medicine is much better done by physicians who are doing research. By the way, and you know, this is not a major thing, but, but um, research or to this matter, doing things that are not straight clinical work, really, really take care of burnout. And you know, the burnout rate, rate in medicine is, is huge, is really huge. And I hear a uh, um, um, physician tell me, you know, this is where I really get my energies to go back and, and work. So there are many, uh, many um, hospitals realize that and also realize the potential, the potential in <clears throat> establishing um, a startups and getting back, you know, some revenues later on, you know, recently in the recent years, I mean, in the last year or so, you know, Shiba has launched two exits, two big exits based on the research over there. So there are a lot of incentives now in the system to really, you know, go and give the, the, the physicians time and also resources to do research, but that's not enough. So there are also uh, efforts on the national level. Ah. Right. Can you speak and about that? That's what I was really wanting to hear. What can you do in your current role that you maybe didn't have time or, or place to do as the head of university, which sounds to me like a very, very powerful position. But how is the government role different? Or the, right. not so, the government. So, the, so first the I, have to, 
I have to give credit because the, you know the major things that are going on right now, uh, I'm involved just you know very very. Uh, my involvement is very limited. However, yeah. um, this is uh, the program that's called Mavri. Mavri, and it is a joint <clears throat> a joint program of philanthropists, the Yad yeah. Nadif Foundation and Klarman Foundation, to go the, together with the. Uh, uh, planning and budgeting committee of uh, the Council of Higher Education, oh. um, and, and yeah, and the uh, and the Academy, the Israel Science Foundation, which is part of the Israel Academy of Sciences, and they all came up together with the uh, with uh, finance uh, uh, ministry, treasury, came up with a very bold program to really, you know, pick all those very capable and, and um, uh, researchers, physicians, um, that they get free time and they get a very considerate kind of uh, infrastructure and, and, and money for research. So this is one of the uh, major, major um, developments right now. It is limited in time, you know, for the next five years. So the idea is how to sustain it, how to really build a sustainable um, uh, system where you are not related, you're not related on donors and philanthropy. Maybe you need some, but you don't, you're not related on that, but rather the, the, uh, the, uh, the Israel, the, uh, uh, the, the, the government is really um, acknowledging the importance of this and really budget it accordingly. And um, we in the Academy of, um, um, the National Academy of Science and Medicine, also are looking for uh, for some formal um, um, uh, some some guidelines and formal bylaws by the uh, by the uh, government in order to sustain that. So so legally will be a very specific, very designed and structured career path. That by the way, the uh, the Israeli Medical Association is very much in support of that. And, uh, the, uh, and, and we are now you know, in the process of really recognizing this career path as, as one of the, of, of the um, of what Israel is offering physicians. Professor Carmi, this has been fascinating, very informative, also very inspiring. And I wanna say, you, know, you started out why it's important to have uh, physicians who are also bench scientists. I see from your career, the advantages in having these sort of national leadership roles, people who've done it all beforehand, who've been um, senior roles in the universities, who've been themselves researchers, that you bring together both in terms of your status, but also your insights, all these many different uh, perspectives. So thank you very much for joining us here today. Thank you, Bruce, for having me.